I want to be there. It is the intersection where issues, politicians, and poll numbers meet. Today, we unveil more than information and numbers, but data that could help shape the city and county's future. So what are we waiting for? From this intersection, let's see where the bare facts lead. Welcome to our first ever bare facts case at Rivard Report poll, our reveal show. If you're a numbers geek, We've got your fix. I want to thank the audience who is with us. We have 10 distinguished members of the community who are with us. They are welcome to answer questions later, but let's meet our panel, the people I call the Bear Facts Brain Trust. First, Demonte Alexander, who is with Bear Facts, Lisa Baratachea, who is with Bear Facts, and Christian Archer with Bear Facts. Thank you guys for being here. Absolutely. So we're going to open this discussion. We're going to talk about a lot of different things, but first off, I want to hear from the man who put this poll together over the last few days, Dave Metz with FM3 Strategies. If we look at the poll as a report card on how Bear County voters think things are going in their community, it's a pretty positive set of feedback that we're getting from the public. Um, they are much more likely to say that things in the community are headed in the right direction than to say that they're off on the wrong track. We have four in five voters who give uh, Bear County very high ratings for its quality of life and uh, as a place to raise a family. And uh, it also, uh, voters tell us they think it's a good place to start a business. So the numbers as a whole are telling us that, that people like uh, living in Bear County, they, they see lots of upsides to it, and they feel like overall uh, the trajectory of the county is headed in the right direction. They believe the trajectory may be heading in the right direction, but they do have some issues. And we're going to get to those in a second. But right now, I want to open up to our panel that's up here on the stage. I'll start with Christian Archer. Uh, Christian and I talked about this idea years ago about starting a poll on what are the issues important to San Antonio. Uh, we're also going to look at the approval ratings for the elected officials. We're going to look at just an open ended question before this hour is up as well, talking about what people think are the most important issues. We're not giving them a choice. We ask them to choose. First off, 651 likely voters in Bear County were polled over five days to get where we are today. You've seen the poll numbers, Christian. What do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, to Dave Metz's point, uh, people genuinely love San Antonio and they believe very much in the city. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a great statement for our leadership, for our Policymakers to understand people love the, love this city. Um, you know, Steve, going back to what you said, you know, we've been talking about this for years. In in other major cities, in Houston, for 15 years, they've been doing a poll very similar to this. They they do it once a year. They take a real look uh, in depth at the city, things that matter to the city, um, so that their policymakers understand what real people believe are important issues facing the city for Harris County. So I'm, I'm super excited that, that our partnership is together, uh, that we have so many people that are interested in, in what the city of, of San Antonio and Bear County look like. Um, so helping to shape the ideas and making sure that people understand that. That's our number one goal, is to make sure that, that the policymakers are aware of where citizens stand. The good news for us and for the city is people are very bullish on the city. Uh, they believe in it. They believe that it's a safe city. 
Um, but there are some concerns for sure that, that we did take a deep dive into. Yeah. Lisa, your take from the numbers. I see you have a, a thick notebook on your lap here. Uh, I don't know if you want to reference a cross section in there or I mean just the overall thought on the poll. Yeah, I'm going to be busy looking stuff up as we <laughs> chat. But I, I think that, you know, in terms of it was positive. I'm not surprised that people are so happy about where they live or where they call home. I do think that there are some issues that um, have been identified. I think that the reinforcement of people, while they might be happy, it's not it's not where we are going to stay. We're not going to be happy with the status quo. We certainly want people to address issues. Um, I think this gives us a tool and a reference point of what the issues are that they want to, to address and really a roadmap, a blueprint, if you will, of the way to, to go about um, managing them. Right, because this is the first of four that we're going to do this year. So we're going to see this is the baseline. This is where we start from. Demonte, your take from the poll you've seen. Man, I, I was really surprised um, to see, well, happy to see that our, our public utility companies did very well. And, and it speaks to the education and outreach they do to the communities and to the taxpayers. I mean, give CPS Energy the People's Choice Award because, you know, they had the highest uh, award, um, percentage point for, um, for their job approval. Yeah. But overall, I'm just very happy to see um, that San Antonio is a compassionate city, like, like you know, most people say we are. Um, I, like, like my colleagues here said, that I feel that there is a lot of issues, obviously, that are addressed with crime, drugs, gangs, and you know, um, homelessness and those types of things. But for the most part, people are willing to give uh, our local government uh, an opportunity and a chance to, to address those All issues. Right. Yeah. Let's get right to the poll, shall we? I want to start with the two most prominent uh, elected officials that we have in Bear County. That is Mayor Ron Nuremberg and County Judge Nelson Wolf. And as we look at those approval numbers in front of us, let's start with Judge Wolf. 23% strongly favorable, 31% uh, somewhat favorable. He's got 54% total favorable, 16% total unfavorable. The mayor just came off a bruising reelection. We were very <clears throat> curious about what this poll would show. 22% strongly in favor, 31% somewhat favorable. For a 53% favorable, 31% unfavorable. Surprised by these numbers, Christian? Well, the truth is I'm, I'm surprised that the mayor rebounded as quickly as he did after a, a tough, tough election against Greg Brockhaus where they, they spent a lot of money and time and energy and effort beating each other up. Um, you know, for the mayor to have 31% uh, people um, opposed to the mayor or view him unfavorably, he's got work to do for sure. Um, his approval rating being over 50 was a little bit of a surprise after that race, as, as close as it was. Um, so I think that for Ron, I think that he looks up and says, that's good news. When it comes to the county judge, um, you know, having a four to one approval to disapproval is certainly an endorsement of his legacy of work. Yeah, but I mean, I look at that 30, I look at the 31% uh, total unfavorable on Ron Nuremberg. Is that a concern for him, do you think, Lisa? Well, I mean, if you're the mayor or if I was the mayor, I'd always be concerned about where my unfavorables are and what I need to do to address that. Um, I think that he has introduced a lot of things and there's a lot of there's a lot on his plate. Um, so I think that there's always room for improvement. And I think that there's some good data in here that he can use on, on identifying ways to get over, get through that. And um, and to exceed expectations, right? Yeah, Nicole. and and he's not in the, for lack of a better word, he's not really in the spotlight right, right. now. And Devontae. that's what I, I mean. He doesn't have an opponent that's running against him. Right. You know, people aren't bringing up some of the things that that you know were saw as negatives against him when he ran for right. re-election the last time. Right, and, and you, ex you, can, you can expect those numbers to dip a little bit when, when you are in a competitive race, especially if they're a viable candidate. But the, look, the good thing about this information and this, this opportunity or what we're doing here is that now he knows who supports him, who doesn't support him, and now his team can collect collectively get in a room and say, all right, how can we drive those, that uh, disapproval rating down? Yeah, you know, yeah. DeMonte and, yeah. and Steve, I want to point this out at, at the, on, the, on our website on barefax.org, any viewer can go to it and actually get down into the details of who's supportive and who's not on a partisan scale, age. Um, you can look at all the different demographics that we did in the research to be able to find out what areas of the town right. he's popular in. And, and uh, <clears throat> one other point. I also, I think, I also want to point out yeah. while you bring up that point, Christian, that when we're polling the mayor, it's just San Antonio City residents. That, like this, right. is a, this is a poll of all Bear County, but when it comes to the mayor, it's narrowed down to just people that live in San Antonio and can vote for the mayor. Great point. And, you know, Steve, I think people, whenever you hear about polls, people, how could you do that with, with only a limited number of samples? 
uh, we actually t did 651 sample sizes. So you can actually look at the county as its own individual poll and as the city voters as a citywide poll. Yeah. Um, and so 651 is actually a very large sampling size. Robust is what Dave Metz told it, me when it I is, did and, my interview with and him. And it's, it's scientific data. Yeah. It's within a plus or minus of 4%. Sorry. No, no, you brought that up. And actually, I think we have a soundbite uh, with Dave Metz talking about the process. And I asked him, I said, people are going to say, okay, these are 651 respondents out of a county that's a million plus. And it, it's a really quick soundbite, but let's play that with Dave Metz right now explaining exactly how he, he went about this process. Talking to just a few people, if they're carefully selected, can give you a pretty good read on what the overall population thinks. As a matter of fact, Dave said you could have 651 people from across the country, and if it was done demographically and, and, and representatively, you would get a good poll out of that as well. That's right, and, and Dave has been a, a, a pollster I've worked with over a number of years. He was the pollster on the Pre-K for SA campaign, and we, we pulled it twice. It never once polled that it was passing, but it showed the momentum that was gathering behind Pre-K for SA. Yeah. Um, and so we were able to use that data to be able to talk to people about things that mattered, about the importance of Pre-K, and actually end up ended up obviously winning the campaign. Let, let's move on to the job approval ratings uh, for some of the elected officials that we have as well. I think we can bring that graphic up next. But uh, uh, Lisa, I mean, you were, you were shaking your head as Christian was talking. What do you, what do you think? So I, as DeMonte mentioned, um, CPS Energy gets the, the gold star, right? They do a lot to, to for 73, 73% approval it's exceptional and i just smudged you know the approval rating so <laughs> my circle wasn't great but 73 percent total approval for cps energy at the top of the list yes of so we pulled cps energy the firefighters association the police officers association via saws the bear county sheriff of course the mayor and the county judge we just talked about we also did the city council and commissioner's court so i think that for me what's the most interesting is that the firefighters pulled so high 72 percent right next to cps energy and they um really are the were the the deriving force for the changes to our to our um city, the charter amendments, our charter right. members last year and um that's so recent and it was um such a a big fight, a brutal fight, one that they were very victorious in, and um, and for them to pull so high, I think was a, was a significant for yeah, me. Okay. And um, you know that the firefighters, um, you know, just finally have negotiated with the city, um, and and they're still so polling so high. I mean, they're always they always poll well. They they're always someone who if, if you're running for office, you want their endorsement. And this really this really speaks to that because they they poll so high. Yeah, let's take this let's take this graphic full frame on the live stream because it's I want to make sure people are seeing exactly what we're talking about. And of course, you can follow on barefacts.org or casehat.com or the Rivard Report where all those uh, all these things are 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 listed. DeMonte? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. And, and that's, it just shows that, you know, most people, you can't decipher uh, an associ uh, firefighter association from firefighters. So when you hear that question, do you support firefighters or the firefighter association, you, you automatically tie them together. So and I, I think that attributes to that number a little bit, but I mean, kudos to them. And it, and it, and it shows how tough that campaign was. Yeah. I think they were even polling higher than that at that time. It, so, it was, it, that, that was another tough campaign, which is why I think the mayor's the, the disapproval actually goes back to the to the campaign, the go vote no campaign against the charter amendments. I think that that probably still reflects a little bit in the, uh, the firefighters popularity and some of the negatives associated with the mayor. So if we go past the, uh, the, the unions here and we get to just the city utilities, mm -hmm. CPS Energy 73 percent. I guess I'm a little surprised that it was that high. Then you have VIA at 64 and then you have SAWS at 62. I'm surprised that SAWS was, I mean, it's still positive, mm -hmm. but that it's not, you know, up there with some of the other utilities. Well, it, I, does it have to do with the water rate hikes that we've been seeing? I think, I think it probably yeah. does, but I, I also think that it, it speaks volumes about CPS and their ability to, to communicate what they're doing, how they're look, looking toward the future. Um, I think 74 for CPS is, was surprisingly high to me. Uh, Steve, not to jump over the utilities, but I also was surprised with Sheriff Salazar. Uh, yeah, and that's to see the next those, thing I was going to talk about. He's positive at, numbers. Yeah, he's at 59%, only 19% disapproval. 
So he's he is of the elected officials that we're talking about. He's the one, you know, that that is go going to have a heated race, I would think, coming up, or at least that's what I thought. Fifty nine percent approval seems very good for him. It it doesn't seem like it's going to be that heated of a race. Uh, you know, he's got several, he's got a number of Democratic opponents, um, and he's also got Republican opponents right. as well. Um, but Sheriff Salazar is sitting in a pretty pretty positive position, uh, and that's, you know, countywide. So so all these numbers are in the, the plus section, mm -hmm. except for San Antonio City Council at 48%, Bear County Commissioner's Court at 46%. Now, is this... DeMonte, you're, I'll, I'll yeah, raise so your hand. Tell me what I, you I mean, I, as, as I was studying these slides, I mean, I, I like I dove deep into these. And, you know, what stood out to me about Bear County's commissioner court was just people don't know about them. And if you look at their disapproval rating, it's not high. Right. Right. And so 16 percent. Right. And so I think a little bit more outreach, maybe a little bit more communication, similar to what CPS Energy is doing is connecting with their their base or their taxpayers or, or their clients. Um, I think that you know, they'll see their approval ratings increase a little bit, but that's what stood out to me. It's not much more of a, it's not a, hey, we disapprove of you. We just need to know more about you and what you right. do. Yeah. Because if you look at the city council, their disapproval is 33%. Right. Significantly higher Absolutely. than what the Bear County Commissioner's Correct. Court is. But I also kind of, you know, if we had polled individual members right. of each one of these bodies, I, they, it would probably be more positive. It, it, would, be high, it would be higher than that. The number of don't know or don't feel like they should respond because they don't, they don't have a clear understanding of, of the whole council as a body. I think that's why, to Devontae's point, that a lot of them just won't answer. Yeah. Let's get to some of the nitty gritty now in this poll. <laughs> We're going to talk about sales tax use. It was something that we asked a couple of times. And as we bring up that graphic, we talked about pre-K for SA, aquifer protection, and public transportation. This is the first graph that we used. And are people in favor of extending the use of local sales tax revenue with varying breadth and intensity? So extending the existing one eight cent sales tax to protect San Antonio's primary water resource, 80% supported that, 80%. Eight out of 10 people said, yeah, I'm for the aquifer. Then extending it to pre-K for SA, which is you know one of the issues that is on the ballot or will be soon, 68%. And then even when it comes to VIA, to, to have it go to VIA to increase the frequency of buses and make public transportation more reliable, 64%. All of them positive. Mm -hmm. Any surprises in here for you guys? I, I think that I was surprised at the how high water came came out um not that i was surprised because there's i mean they've gone through five um elections they've right. been successful for five elections that's a lot um i think that um individually seeing that they all did so well i think the pre-k number was a little bit also surprising since it didn't win big right. um, for there to be so much positivity around that that initiative i think is it really says a lot about the people's interest in education locally and that this is a beneficial for our whole community. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, and then with VIA, we know from the their um, other spot that, that they're favorable or that they're looked at favorably. So, um, but individually it was, it's good. Um, I think that the next part of the question is well, and it, much it, more well, interesting. But, it, but I, I want to point out what Dave Metz told me when I talked to him when we when we dissected this poll. He said that the Edwards Aquifer Protection is highly bipartisan. Republicans, Democrats, independents yes. are all together on the fact that we need aquifer protection. Protecting yes. our water, yes. main water source is very important. And he says it has got great bipartisan support, which the other two don't no, necessarily that's right. have. That's and right. so that's why he right. said that's why it's, it's as high as it is. It's got bipartisan support. Well, I agree. I, I, look, I think the thing that stuck out to me the most was how high all of them polled. Yes. Yeah. I think there's no question about it when it comes to the aquifer. That's a that's a. That, that needs to be solved. Now, and <laughs> we had a suspicion when we were talking about these questions that people would, yeah, I want it all. But when they have to make a choice, it changes a little bit. And that's the next poll slide we're going to bring up, a priority for sales tax revenue. This is a poll I want to take this full as well. And you see, when asked to choose between these priorities, they could only choose one. Voters overwhelmingly supported protecting the aquifer. 42% supported that. 30% keeping pre-K for SA or even expanding pre-K for SA. 
seven percent via. Mm -hmm. Lower than all of them. Lower than don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> what's clear is that there's work to do. Um, this and, and, and look, Steve, this is an important point. At no point would all three of them appear on the ballot where right. you could choose one. Right. And so we've got the luxury with with our partnership of asking questions that wouldn't be able to appear on the ballot like this. Choose one of the three. Well, Aquifer clearly wins the day. And I think as the mayor and as you know, as they're struggling with with um, the transit part, saying, well, we're only down at seven. It's never going to appear on the ballot like this. Right. And so if aquifer protection gets solved, and I know that the mayor and the county judge are working on how they're going to provide a permanent solution to protecting the aquifer, pre-K for SA is going to go on the May ballot. And it's obviously in a very strong position to pass by May, which leads us to transit. And the mayor, you know, they've got a lot. Uh, there's a campaign to run. There are going to be plenty of, of devil in the details mm -hmm. uh, regarding the transit plan. But if, you know, before you look at the seven, look at, at how positively it polled, mm -hmm. right? And so there is a pathway to victory if the mayor solves the aquifer protection and makes that a permanent solution. Pre K passes, then they've got, a, a, you know, transit really is teed up to do well by November, so long as they put the right, the right program together and a, and a strong campaign. None of these campaigns are ever easy. They're, they, they're, they're always hard. You've got to get out and educate the voters. And, and this so, is one of those things where, where once you get on the barefacts.org website or, or any of the other partner websites, you can actually see how this polls in different parts of the county, like it's broken down by county commissioner's district. And so you can see how this particular issue polls across the city. Broken down by partisanship, by age, gender. by gender, ethnicity. Right. Um, is, is, there's a deep dive into all of these numbers. Is this a canary in the coal mine, though, Lisa? 7% when compared to these other two. <laughs> I mean, I think that Christian's right on. I mean, I, they're not on the same ballot. If they were, I think that you're right. But they're not. And so, you know, what can they, what can people do? What can policymakers do? How does the campaign uh, establish their strategy? And then how can they overcome this r really um, low number, right? From a campaign strategy perspective, that's, it's and hard to overcome. But I think that because of, because of pre-K not being on the ballot, um, the, the, the ballot language will not say pick one. Um, the ballot language would be about transit. And so what do we need to do in order to address the water so that transit can move to the forefront? Yeah, but there could be other, there are likely going to be other issues out there that are going to take attention away from transit, whether it's, you know, a billion dollar bond from SAISD when it's some of the other things that people are talking about. They're going to have to rank yeah. public transportation in there at some point. And, yeah. and really that, I mean, from a strategy perspective, um, we, we've all worked on campaigns. I mean, that's what the campaign's all about. What the, what's the messaging? Where Where's the message resonate? Who are your voters? How, how are we gonna reach the people who vote um, to, to move the needle on that and yeah. to move the needle on that? And right? I think it's important to remember that this is not the, the, the silver bullet that fixes all problems. This, right. is a, this is a tool and a resource that policymakers can use and even even uh, um, voters, you know, as a as a guide, to make decisions on how we plan for the future. And I, and I think if they use it constructively, it, it'll, it'll find it very useful. My my, yeah. my takeaway is there's a pathway to victory yeah. for okay. transit. Yeah. But it's because a of the earlier that, numbers, not necessarily these numbers, because that, of the earlier. That, numbers. That's right. And and you know, using this again, aquifer protection is number one when it's standalone and when you compare them. That's that's got to be something. There's got to be a checkbox next to that yeah. or transit's going to be in trouble. But I know that the mayor and county judge are working hard to be able to provide a long term solution. But it's clear as a bell. They've got to do that. Yeah. All right. Let's move now to our open ended major question that we asked people, the 651 people. We asked them to name what is their most important issue? that affects their lives, that they think Bear County needs to work on, the elected officials. And these are very interesting poll numbers as we look. Number one, at 19%, crime, theft, burglaries, law enforcement, more police needed. I'm not surprised by that number. I am surprised by the second number we see here. 18% said homelessness. 
10% traffic congestion, 10% cost of living, poverty, low income, 10% infrastructure, roads, streets. Now, when I look at the 18% for homelessness, I really thought we would see something about affordable housing, mm -hmm. uh, something along that line. We didn't necessarily see that, but we did see poverty also at 10%. Your take on these numbers, Christian? Well, I think that it's the number one job of the city is to protect the citizens and, and by providing a, a strong police force. And so crime, gangs, uh, drugs, um, polled throughout, throughout our poll, um, always elevated to the very top of concerns. Um, uh, homelessness uh, was a surprise to me, Steve. Um, you've obviously done a, a number of deep dives into homelessness. Yeah. Uh, homelessness was was kind of a shock that it stood out as much as it as it did. And I don't know if that's from, you know, I mean, I think, you know, Austin's going through this homeless crisis right. as well. Yeah. And so I think it, it really is, you know, on the forefront of people's minds. Um, but again, it's 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 another good guide to things that people, you know, <clears throat> things that people are concerned yeah. about. So, By the way, uh, October. We did a special Living in the Shadows. It's on ksat.com right now if you want to look at it and some of the issues with the homeless situation in San Antonio and how it's changed over you know, 14 years when I did the first uh, special on homelessness and that led to Haven for Hope and you know, kind of how the situation has changed. Lisa, your reaction to these numbers? Well, so very interestingly, the crime is the highest uh, when also people feel safe. You know, and one of the other yeah. one of the other things that we've learned is that people, um, the majority of people feel safe in their neighborhood, safe, in, safe their in their parks, parks safe downtown. Safe down yes. Yeah, so it's really interesting that dichotomy of crime, theft high, but I do feel safe. Um, I think also in this, um, I'm also very interested in homelessness. Uh, it's something that I've learned a lot about over the, the last um, 12 months. And um, I'm actually glad to see it on there because I think that the more awareness, the more attention, the more we can engage and do something about it. Um, so also what's interesting is that transit is 3%, right? And that's part of our, you know, right. that overall, what are the issues and the challenge for the uh, also education. But traffic is at 10. But Congestion's at, at 10. 10. So drawing those, drawing those two, um, you know, comparisons and looking at what, what we've also seen. Um, also in that, you know, kind of the bigger picture of education and poverty and uh, diabetes and just uh, uh, affordable housing. That's the next, that a, we've got that poll next. There's a link, right, in, in some of those discussions, um, just affordability. And we, we need to, that's something I think that's really taking shape in our community and something that we, I think that is a really interesting public policy conversation to, to pursue. And I think in, in talking with Dave Metz, uh, I asked him specifically about the homelessness question. He said he wasn't that surprised because in places in he polls, yeah, and especially on the West Coast, homelessness is a big concern. So he, he, he said he wasn't really that surprised that it, that it rose as high as it did mm -hmm. in our Bear County poll. I think Lisa answered every one of those on that slide. <laughs> yeah, I know, she went down them all. But, uh, but, uh, but, so so the, next, the next slide we have is the other serious issues question. We ask people, you know, what else they're concerned about. Ask to identify major local concerns, but then we go to the next slide. Two thirds or more rate homelessness, diabetes, and crime as serious local problems. So this one wasn't open ended. This one we asked them to talk about the different things that they see out there. Extremely very serious problem: homelessness, 72 percent. The number of residents who have or are at risk for diabetes, 67 percent. Crimes, gangs, drugs. This goes down to the third spot on this one now: 66 percent. The cost of health care. 64%, property crime, 63%, the amount you pay in local property taxes, 57%, low wages, 53%, the quality of public education, 52 income inequality, 51 rate increases on your water bill, 48 illegal immigration, 44 climate change, 42 and lack of affordable housing, 41 That's what I was talking about, how you yeah. would think homelessness and lack of affordable housing may go together, but not necessarily. I, right. I, I mean, in... What I've learned about homelessness, a lot of times it's mental health problems that there's not a safety net in this mm -hmm. city well, and county and 
addiction. Yeah, well, there's, there's that coupled with a lot of times these people are just, their families are obliterated. Like they don't right. have families, you know? So there's a lot of different um, uh, things that happen that cause someone to be homeless and that tie into that. And it's gonna take a collective approach to do that. But what I wanted to highlight was, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about education. Yes. And these past couple of legislative sessions where it's been high profile, and it's just surprising to me how low it falls mm. on the, um, down on, on the on the list of priorities here but could that speak to maybe voters feel like the legislature did something this time you know but even more so climate change we have a huge huge push for climate change and if you look at the across the slate um, people don't feel it's a problem here in Bear County even young people between the ages of 18 and 29 it's staggering it's over 60 percent feel yeah. that it's not an issue so not to say you know that I'm that's a stance we're taking but it's just polarizing to see numbers that way yeah Christian you you surprised at any of these things yeah I was surprised by the lack of affordable housing you know the mayor's got an affordable right. housing task thing that force he's been talking been, a lot about it's been you know top of the mind for city council and for the mayor um, and to see it you know that it wasn't a major concern was really stood out to me. I, again, some of these some of these things are always in every city in America. You're going to see homelessness and you're going to see crime and things that cities are supposed to be focused on. You know, so people are kind of programmed to answer it that way as well. Um, but some of the, the lower numbers really did stand out to me. I thought climate change would be a bigger issue. I, I thought affordable housing uh, would be a bigger issue. So. Those were the two that really stuck out to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we, I guess I'm heartened because we have given some attention to homelessness and we certainly give a lot of attention to diabetes and, and fighting diabetes and things like that in our community. There's part of me that's happy to see that what we're hitting on yeah. as the media seems to be some of the same concerns there. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to open it up to our guests who are with us and uh, uh, kind of let them answer questions or ask you guys questions or talk about what they saw in this poll. Um, I think this thing's on, it is on. All right, so who wants to go first? <laughs> yes, <laughs> in back. <laughs> I'll let you introduce yourself and then uh, okay. ask the question. Okay, hi, uh, Marcy Trevino Ripper and um, I have a small law firm locally and a political consulting firm. And um, my question's about the 7% VIA. So only 5% of citizens ride VIA. So to me, the 7% was not that surprising when you're being asked to choose between water, which we all touch, and, a, and a, an entity or a, or a service that we don't all touch on. Um, so did, was that surprising or not to you with, that, uh, with the 5% VIA ridership? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I, yeah, it, it, it really was surprising. I thought it would I thought it'd be higher. Clearly, the mayor's been focused on it. It's his number one top priority. Um, and to see it, you know, the 7%, I think, is a little bit misleading. When it's a standalone question, it ranks very high. Mm -hmm. And if there were, if, if I were running that campaign, starting off with 64% support for dedicating an eighth of a cent to um, help solve transit, um, and we used via, we used buses, we used, you know, all of those kind of catch words, which might turn someone off, um, you know, to see it at 64 percent. That's a strong number going into this election when they haven't done a campaign. They haven't put out messaging. It's just been kind of, you know, where, where is it going to come down? So but when you compare it to the other two, Marcy, to your point, um, aquifer, 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 get that problem solved so that we don't have to go to, the, go to the ballot box every five years to vote on whether or not we want to protect the aquifer. There is unequivocally no doubt about it, everyone, to Steve's point earlier, regarding Republicans and Democrats, we want this solved, we want this behind us, um, so that we're not having to vote on whether or not we protect the aquifer every five years. Make it a permanent solution. I, I, let me play devil's advocate here for a second because I think you did make a good point. Only 5% of the population ride via right now. I, I, and, I, and I saw light rail was, we, we pulled light rail and it was down there as well. But I mean, is there a way to expand the way via is selling this? I mean, because I, right now, if I'm running against this, I'm just going to say, why are we paying for more buses? Well, I, that note that only 5% <laughs> of people are going to ride. Yeah, I, I think Via's point is going to be that, that to provide more reliable um, services, right, on time and a faster um, service 
uh, is why uh, people will, will consider writing via yeah. and why their ridership will go up if you can provide on time, reliable, faster services, which is what I think the mayor wants to do. And, and when you looked at, at traffic and say, well, we want to solve this traffic problem so that we don't become Houston or we don't become Austin. How do we stay? You know, we're one of the fastest growing cities in the entire country. Right. And how do we stay uh, in front of that and make sure that employees can get to the to the employers? Uh, I think that that would be Via's big argument is faster, reliable and on time. And Lisa, I will take the other side of the coin since that's what I like to do in, the, in all of these <laughs> things. So nobody can really tell what I feel personally. But I mean, Via is right now, as we speak, not being funded as well as some of the other major transportation that's, companies in other cities. Right, so that's a, it's a huge challenge for VIA. They get half a penny, whereas other communities in Texas get a full, a full penny to support their transit system. And it really puts them in a, in a, real, in a huge disadvantage. Um, this, the funding from the eighth of a cent absolutely doesn't make them whole. It gives them more opportunity to to advance what they're already doing. Um, they need more money to operate because we are a large city and there needs to be investment in developing their operations so that they can become more reliable, so that they can create more reliability and the opportunity for more ridership. Um, but if, they're, if there's not an investment in what they are able to do, then they're never going to get better and do more because um, they're so stifled by their revenue. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, we'll hear about more in the campaign is that they'll be able to do more with more investment. Um, other communities are uh, have um, billions of dollars that are going towards bonds to um, towards their to to build up their their um, transit systems and in, in uh, within San Antonio we're just trying to figure out how to pay for operations right and so I think that that I, I think that that's what you wanted me to to touch a little bit on but I, I you know from an employer stand up standpoint people need their employees to be able to get to work um, and this the conversation about um, from a business uh, standpoint from a, it's right, right from a business standpoint so how can we help people get to work um, when we're not providing reliable transportation. Um, the, the workforce and, and low unemployment creates a demand for businesses to hire, and there's a challenge with getting people to work um, in downtown and everywhere. But you know, it, it costs money to park downtown, and transit and via is a very uh, real op, you know, need. And so um, it's, it's a smart um, investment for our community that, um, that we see it, is it real, is, you know, in a demand in a real need? And then, you know, not to compare us to Houston, but Houston's getting ready to do a multiple billion dollar bond just dealing with transit. But they have and, light rail. Uh, they, they do. And, and, and they've also roads. got a, a and fast toll roads. and toll, toll roads. <laughs> and so what, what are the opportunities for VIA to be able to expand? Where do they look for more revenue? And so I think that, that this is the first this yeah. is the first start. OK, I want to open it up to the floor. Can I ask a follow up question? Yes, absolutely. Um, so in the. My name is Blakely Fernandez. Hi, Blakely. And I'm um, on the seven percent slide, the language that was used was public transit, whereas on the um, the slide for favorability showing the various entities in town, it was listed specifically as VIA. Do you think the seven percent would be higher if the language had used VIA and not public transit generally? I mean, I, I appreciate there's not another provider, but I wonder if VIA is a is an entity might have helped that question. More positive. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a fair question, and, and um, maybe on poll two, Blakely, we can, <laughs> <laughs> we can, in fact, on, on poll two, we've actually talked about doing a much deeper dive into the transit as we get more clarity from the mayor and from the people at Connect SA about what they're looking to spend the eighth of a cent on. I think that we need more clarity. The, the truth is we were a little bit hamstrung by not being able to go into the, the details on being able to describe that, that question. So we tried to do it in a, in a broad view, um, which might have actually hurt. It might be why that number is so low, is because we weren't able to describe it with a lot of specificity. Can I, let me ask a question, and, and then this is for you, DeMonte. If, if somebody is looking at these questions and say, man, I wish they would have called me. I wish <laughs> I could have taken that poll. <laughs> Am I correct that you can take the poll on barefax.org? Uh, not yet. Okay, but, but you will be able but to. But we will be able to. Uh, it won't be scientific, but we do want people to feel like 
they have a voice and they have a say in this as well. I know on your Twitter page you asked people right. certain questions right. on the bare fa and bare fact at bare facts is the right. Twitter page correct? Right at bare facts. Yeah, I see. I'm. Yeah, and I'm so trying to help you out because your yeah. communications, you know, I got your back here, man. So what, what, what we're trying to do here is, you know, obviously we shared the chart of the right direction, wrong direction, and we saw that voters, you know, feel like we're going in the right direction. But that was from our scientific poll. Right. But as far as social media, you want to engage. You want people to feel like they're involved, too, and you want them to participate. So I just put a poll up and said, hey, what do you guys think? You know, because that's important and that's going to be a big part of this for all these initiatives. The, especially the ones that are on the ballot, we're going to need our entire community to get around them. And, and we can't do that without engaging them and educating them about what we're doing. And that's the most, I'm just going to say from, from my perspective, mm -hmm. uh, that's the most exciting thing about this poll is we're asking people their opinion. They, this right. is really 651 people's voice. I mean, this is Bear County's voice. This isn't the mayor or the county judge or Christian Archer or myself. I mean, this is where the data leads us, what the people say is important. And, you know, we'll, we'll see. Right. What, what you guys will see in the future is on, if you go to our site, barefacts.org, one of those features will be, they'll be able to weigh in on those top line issues on their own. And so you'll be able to see it go up and down depending on who's visited the site and who's voted. And so, although it won't be scientific, it will give us a good idea, a good feel of how people feel about those issues outside of our traditional. Well, I hope it'll encourage people to be engaged in local government. Absolutely. And that's what, the, that's what this is all that's, about. That's, that's we want to boost civic engagement. We know our numbers are low when it comes to our elections. And so we hope this, um, our data, We'll, we'll encourage other people to get involved and, and excite them about getting involved. And maybe involved. learn, some, learn more change about it. VIA and the public Voice transportation. It, it. Voice it, change it, right. Absolutely. Exactly. All right, you have a question. Yeah, uh, Steve, um, Marco Barros. I, I work with a lot of small businesses, so I'm very pleased that you have a baseline. This is an incredible research piece. So what I heard two key words from Christian, the quality of life was very, very high, and also how friendly the city of San Antonio is about small business. The question is, I haven't read the whole report, so I don't know if the, those people um, ask were also asked, what barriers do we have to, uh, to bring more small business here, operators? So what barriers can we get rid of so that we become more friendly for small business operators? Yeah, what barriers do you think need to be taken away? Um, I think we need to be more friendly, especially in the areas. I hear a lot from small business operators when they're building an office or expanding. Uh, how long the development services process takes. Uh, the certificate of occupancy. I have uh, a friend of mine who um, has been waiting for that certificate of occupancy for almost 90 days. Wow. And every time they go, they find something else. Instead of one trip, hey, we need to for you to fix A, B, and C. So he's taken three trips, they found an A, and then a B and a C. So the poor guy hasn't been able to open a new landscaping company with a new location because he's still waiting for the certificate of occupancy. Yeah. That's as simple as that. Yeah. I'll open up to you guys. Well, um, so in this poll, we don't do that extensive of a dive for barriers. I think that just in our the life and the creation of the Barefax poll, I think there's opportunities for, for us to explore those exact kinds of things, Marco. You know, where is it that people are interested and, and to dive into, into specific things like transit, like small businesses, like the economy locally. Um, I think that this is the first, it was, a, I mean, the first one, you know, we, we had, um, we had a lot of questions in our <laughs> original uh, poll yeah. and it was incredibly long. And so we had to, figure out um, what, what is it that we wanted to get out of poll one. Um, there's, um, we've all gotten phone calls for the last um, couple of days saying, you know, I've got ideas for you for the next one. And so um, yeah. we're open to your input. We're yeah, Marco, in, I, we're in uncharted territory is, here. I mean, yeah. like this is you know, it, 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 so it's a little bit frustrating not to be able to take a really deep dive in any of the topics. We really wanted a, a baseline. Where do we start from? And we wanted to be able to hear from people, right? So um, at the bottom of each question, we actually have a, a section called Voice It, Change It, mm -hmm. where you can give us ideas and opportunities or things that we missed. I think that there's no question about it. We've got to do a deep dive in business development uh, and how do we sustain our, our companies here? That There was a question the about roof. the business environment, like how do you think the business environment is mm -hmm. in San Antonio? And I believe that was very yeah. positive. It, right. But I'm curious too, the, like how that broke down 
-hmm. between, you know, Republicans, independents, Democrats, and even different parts of the city as well. By the way, See, I, I love the name, so don't change the name. This is don't. the <laughs> I love okay, it. Okay, tell Rick Casey yeah. that. Because yeah. He, yeah. Uh, but well, one, one other thing. So in the Houston poll, which I alluded to that they do once a year, they asked um, a, a lot of really broad questions, right? A lot of, you know, we, we want to stay out of kind of the head-to-head -head political battles and really focus on the future. And in Houston, they asked this very interesting question. If you had um, an emergency that cost $400, could you afford it? And 39% of Houstonians couldn't afford yeah. a $400 emergency. And so, you know, I think that that helps our policymakers understand the needs of their community. And so questions like that, we're, we're looking forward to asking in um, as we get to do this four times a year. So every three months, uh, we'll have a quarterly Bearfax case at Rivard Report poll. And so we're definitely going to do a deeper dive in, in business development. Um, and sustainability. And I think that's one of the things we talked about too, is being able to take some of the issues that we find in this and have a forum, kind of like what we're doing today, that's, where we yeah. have business leaders and government people up on the stage and people that are in the audience can ask the questions based on what we're seeing in some of these polling. So I think that's down the road. Right. I want to get to some questions sure. uh, yeah. from people that are that are here right now. Introduce yourself. Sure. Um, Al Ariola with the South Chamber. Thank you guys for your leadership on this poll. It is going to be an important tool to, to developing important policies. I'm more curious back on transit and via uh, with respect to your survey results and your sample audience. Did you see any kind of distinction between folks who live in the city of San Antonio versus Bear County and, and their appetite for transit? I, maybe that's too specific. That Bear, look, I'm sure that information is there. We definitely have that, but it was we've been combing through so much data right now. Yeah. See, Lisa but, put her folder but, down on the ground. <laughs> she can't answer that hey, right but, now. But, but yeah. I will tell you. But I, I think, hey, but I will tell you this: you can go to bearfacts.org. You can go to that question, and you can you can see yourself the demographics and where it plays out. And so, but also if you if you just run across something uh, like right before we came on the show, I got a call. Somebody needed some help finding something on the site. You you can reach out to us. We'll be happy to help navigate um, and to find any information you need. Yeah, because we want people we yeah. want people to take yeah. to get the information that they're looking for from this poll. You know, it's a great question though. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and it exists. All right, we got about 10 minutes left. I feel like I'm Oprah. Or <laughs> I know I'm dating myself when I say Everyone Donahue. Gets a car. I know I, I, I'm dating myself when I say Donahue, but okay, so go ahead to your next question. Hi, Carmen Tia Greer. One of the things that I kind of noticed in one of the pollings when they asked what um, was still really important to you, how infrastructure rated really high, roads, then traffic and congestion, and then public transportation. And I'm wondering what we can do, or maybe this would be the question for V is like, how do you connect those mm -hmm. for voters so that they're able to see the connection and how those mm. are strategically aligned, as well as when we talk about affordable housing, low um, income mm -hmm. uh, poverty for those, like how are they making those, those connections to that? Well, I think the campaign needs you to be one of their <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But hey, I'll just I'll just say something really quick and I'll let these guys jump in. You know, we just passed an infrastructure bond of what, eight hundred and fifty million dollars, five hundred and fifty million of that approximately went to infrastructure. And so I think that's an important story to tell as well. It says, hey, look, you you supported overwhelmingly this bond to build infrastructure for roads, bridges, sidewalks, all of those things. And all of these things are critical for us to move forward with mass transit or, or, or increasing frequency and bus routes and those types of things. So you've already, you've already approved it, you, you get it, you understand it, and they just have to connect those two. There's also an interesting question on there that we didn't highlight in the graphics, and it talked specifically about the fact that in the last census, San Antonio was ranked number one out of the top 25 cities for its pop for poverty. And did people think that was a concern? And overwhelmingly, people said yes. So there are so many things in this poll, you know, that we could pull out. But that's one of the most important things that Dave Metz said he noticed as well, is that that is a major concern when we talk about poverty. And maybe that fits into affordable housing. It fits under a lot of different envelopes. So next question. Um, Eddie, I'll have the, um, my question is, uh, going back to the homeless issue, um, I'm wondering... Um, first of all, uh, thank you for doing this. I, I think it's very important. No, but number two, uh, it might be good to put our city in context with how Houstonians feel about homelessness, how Austin feels, mm. Dallas. Um, 
you know, years ago, homelessness was something that a lot of people cared about it, but it wasn't um, uh, something that they experienced every day. And when you drive through downtown Austin, it's a lot more apparent than it used to be. But specifically, what I'm curious about with Austin is we're unique in that we have Haven for Hope. Yeah. And Austin was talking about buying a hotel to be able to house uh, the homeless. And so uh, we may be in, in a leading way, uh, a city that's trying to solve the problem. So that's why I'd be curious to see. It's not so much something to put in your next poll, but something to put on the website, uh, put us in context with other Texas cities. And Al, yeah. I can answer your question a little bit. I mean, yeah, San Antonio is definitely seen as a leader because of Haven for Hope and the public-private partnership that Haven for Hope has, has brought together. Also, I think the situation in San Antonio has changed. It used to be if you went downtown San Antonio, you saw a homelessness problem. Well, now it's kind of spread and maybe spread into more people's neighborhoods. You know, we found, you know, uh, 1604 out by SeaWorld. We found, you know, Alamo Heights. Okay. I mean, you know, it, it's, it seems as if this issue is more spread across the county and even outside of the county in places like Bernie than it was maybe 14 years ago. But okay. I, think, I think that's a, good, a great question is how does it compare to Austin and Houston and some of those other communities? And I think crime is the same way where it's now in neighborhoods that mm -hmm. it may not have been previously. Yeah. yeah. That's a great question. Can I give can I give your employer a plug here? Can I sure. say you're from IBC? <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure you weren't in incognito no, 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 here. No, no. All right, all right, all right. It's, right I just, it's your it's your opportunity. You know, <laughs> free free advertising isn't a bad thing. So, but I'll open it up to the panel when it comes to the question of homelessness too. I'll let you guys take a dab. Go. Go. Uh, well, you know, look, I've, Eddie, thank you one for the for the 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 question. I you know I think that we like to think of ourselves as leaders when it comes to homelessness. I was uh, working for Mayor Hardberger when the idea of Haven for Hope came up. And you know, to watch community leaders and our civic leaders come together to really try and think about the long range um, view of homelessness and try to get to a solutions based um, uh, answer. Uh, I think that that's what you find with Haven for Hope. I, again, I think it's, um, if you were to compare us to Austin, I think we are, you know, uh, just, so much better uh, in dealing with how do you get to a solutions for people that are homeless. But you know, to Steve's point with uh, 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 mental health issues, yeah. uh, I think is and another addiction. is an, another major hurdle that we've got to overcome. And that as long as our city leaders continue to try and advance the ball, I, the the idea Haven for Hope is now coming up on Steve. How, can you help yeah, me here? Yeah, it's like, it's like nine, years? ten years. So yeah, nine, and, ten and, years? But, the, but the but the thing with Haven for Hope is it's it's even overwhelmed at this point. I mean, yeah. the, the m amount of families that they're seeing there, they do not want to turn families away. And on a nightly basis, they're turning their chapel into a dormitory mm. for people to sleep. They are out of room. And I, in talking to former Mayor Hardberger about this issue, he said, I think we need more Haven for Hopes, like satellite Haven for Hopes in different parts of the city. But you know, there's also the fact Haven for Hope doesn't happen without a Mayor Hardberger and a Patty Radel, mm -hmm. and you Bill know, a Bill Greehy. And, and, and so, you know, maybe Austin and Houston don't have a Bill Greehy who's ready to step up and say, I'm gonna put millions into this endeavor. Well, I think, you know, just in terms of homelessness, there's a big conversation happening at City Hall. There's a consultant that's been hired. Um, the report from the consultant is supposed to be published in right. March. Um, and the idea behind bringing on the consultant was to help us kind of let, like taking it to the next level. So what we've heard from him so far is that you know, we're doing really well and we do things a lot better than, and we have a better circumstance than other communities because we have Haven as a resource and because there's a lot of other providers that assist Haven, right? That are not right. just at Haven, they're not, they're, they're in other parts of the community, which is definitely needed, right? We just talked about how it's in, in multiple places. And I think that, that that conversation is going to continue um, just philosophically, you know, housing first, um, that is something that we as a community need to figure out how to make that happen beyond just Haven for Hope, where people who are um, uh, 
addicted or who um, are abusers that they have a place to go to since they can't go to Haven. And so I think in the, the development of that, um, the issue and learning more about what we have, the point in time count that just happened, mm -hmm. um, we're going to know a lot more in the next couple of months about maybe some of the kind of the next steps for our community to really address the issue. But um, it's, at, at least we're addressing it and, and it's not something that is being, you know, swept under the rug or because we have Chehaven, like we feel like we're done with it. Um, we, we know from this, that people are still concerned. It's not a done deal. Haven is a great asset, um, but they can't be responsible for the entire of the solution. Right, right? it's an asset, it's not a solution. Right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Anybody else out here have a question? Yes, sir. Jim Campbell. So back to, I'm Jim Campbell, by the way. Hi, Jim. Back to a process uh, for just a second. Um, and this is in the weeds, I apologize, but I know you'll have the answer. <laughs> so, so we're looking at pre-K for SA as a May election, as, as I've heard, mm -hmm. and, but the transit would be in November. Mm -hmm. Do you adjust your sampling according to which election it's gonna be? Because obviously you've got twice the turnout in November that you would have in a May election? Jim, fair question, and, and the truth of the matter is no. Our, our poll results are based on November and what the projection is for November. So th this is based on November uh, likely voters. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I think when you break out pre-K for SA, polling as high as it did, um, it's very popular. I, I, I have heard of other polls that pre-K has done that, that kind of parallels um, in the research that we found. Uh, it, but but I, I, I think that with the strength from our poll and the other polls, that it only makes sense for pre-K to go in May because it's a standalone issue. Um, I, the one, one of the reasons why I would argue for pre-K going in May, and I've been a big supporter of it and ran the first campaign, um, in May you're going to get more informed voters, not less informed voters. In November, you have people that show up to vote for the president and they'll work their way down the ballot and maybe they won't understand the you know the the complexities of pre-k for SA. but in may these are city voters these are hardcore voters and they're going to understand pre-k at a higher level and i think the numbers would actually be better all right i think we're gonna have to wrap it up because we wanted to get this out of done by 3 30. i want to thank the people who are out here i'll call you the audience but you're really <laughs> you're really very well educated you had great questions thank you for joining us for this. And of course, the panel, Demonte, Lisa, Christian, thanks for joining us. And all of you who are watching at home, I wanna thank you as well for live streaming. And of course, this will live on ksat.com, on bearfacts.org, maybe even on the rivardreport.com <laughs> before it's all said and done. But yeah. the results are out there. The leaders seem to be paying attention. So let's voice it, change it. I'm Steve Spreester. Thanks for joining us for this KSAT live stream. Awesome. We survived. <laughs>